two tutorials, two seven and two eight, graphing exponential functions and graphing log functions. We're trying to get to the point where we can graph y equals some number to the power of x. And so that's the first kind of outcome that I'm hoping for here is so that you understand what happens as you change the whatever that base is. As you change the base here, how does it affect the, the resulting graph? And then after that, if we do some transformations to that graph. Transformations, we haven't done the transformations unit, but you have done some transformations in grade 11. You graphed a parabola, you did this. And you did various things with it. So before we sort of go through and fill out all the blanks, because I don't think that's going to be useful, us doing that together, we're going to look in general at y equals a to the x and see what happens. And then we'll worry about going through and filling out all the blanks and everything like that. So we're looking for what the basic graph looks like, how, how different bases change the look of the graph, and then if we make some tra do some transformations. I don't know if you want to take an extra piece of paper and write this down, any of it. It's entirely up to you. I'm going to use this graphing program here for this. You can use your graphing calculator if you want to graph exponential functions pretty easily. <coughs> okay, so... First, I'm going to graph y equals, probably a good number is y equals 2 to the power of x. That's a pretty basic exponential function. It looks like this. Does that make, does that make sense for what you, is that, that's the first one that I have there for you, right? Isn't that the first one on that page? So we're going to look at the, what, what things do you notice about that graph? Anything significant? Anything about the different values? I could put a dot on here and move it along if you want to see what the values are. Tell me anything that we should probably notice about this. Incidentally, you could copy down the points here. I'll stop it at different places. You can copy down the points into that table if you want. I mean, I'm sure you're capable of doing it on your own, but notice what this is saying. This is saying whatever the x value is, the y value is 2 to the power of that number. So it has a y-intercept of 1. <coughs> so 0, 1 is a point. 1, 2 is a point, right? Because 2 to the 1 is 2. 2 to the 2 is 4. If I move this down, you might be able to see a little bit more even. 2 to the 2 is 4. We can get the very next point on here. 2 to the 3 is 8. As I go to the right, the values are going to get bigger and bigger. As I go to the left, what's going to happen here? Why is this a half? I can't get it quite on there, I guess, but there we go. 2 to the negative 1 is 1 over 2, right? The reciprocal. Negative powers are reciprocals. So this value over here, this y value, a half, is going to be the reciprocal of whatever it is on this side. If this was 2, this is a half. When this was 4, 2 to the 2 is 4, so 2 to the negative 2 is a quarter. 2 to the 3 is 8. So 2 to the negative 3 should be, this is actually 1 8 pretty close, rounded maybe. It's actually rounding it the wrong way, but... Okay, as you keep going here, what's going to happen with these values? To the right, they're going to get bigger and bigger. To the right, they're going to get bigger and bigger. So as I go to the left, their reciprocals are going to get smaller and smaller, right? These are th This side is the reciprocals of all the ones on this side because negative powers are just reciprocals of positive powers. So as you go to the right farther and farther, it's getting bigger and bigger numbers. So then on this side, it's getting sm to be smaller and smaller numbers. This is actually, this horizontal line here is called the an asymptote for this graph because no matter how far I go to the right here, okay, let's do this. If I keep going to the right now, it looks like you can't see it anymore, but if you look at the points up here, point zero 0.01, now pretty soon it's going to round it off to zero even though it's not really zero. If I stretch the scale out, you could see that maybe. 
Like if we stretch this out, you can see that it's not really touching that line. I don't know what the limit of this, what this will do here for me. Okay, over here, you still can't see it. If I made this a higher um, number of decimal places, you'd see it's not really there yet. This is always going to get closer and closer to that line, but it's never going to touch that line. Go back to this way again here. Maybe not. Anything else we should notice about this graph? Okay, there's no, there's never any negative values. There's never any negative y values. That's another thing to notice. 2 to the power of x, no matter what you put in here, positive, negative numbers, 0, you can never get a negative y value. So where it asks for the, the domain and the range and all that stuff, eventually, you could think about the domain and the range for this, what it is. I'm going to just make a blank space at the top. I know that you have, you could you could fill this in here um, afterwards to talk about it. I'm just going to go here and copy a picture of that graph. Okay, so here's this graph. This is y equals 2 to the x. What's the domain of that graph? The domain is, all, is possible x values. Are there any restrictions on what I can put in there for x? Remember last, last class we talked about restrictions on logarithmic functions? There were certain values x couldn't be. Are there restrictions in this case? No, no restrictions, right? This is all real numbers. If you're going to use the symbols for that, it goes like this. <laughs> x, it's not an E. It's a, it's a symbol that looks like a half circle with a line in the middle. It's not an E. It's a symbol that means is an element of. X is an element of, and you can put a, a R like that, mathematicians use to represent real numbers. Don't put this, X, E, R. <laughs> it's a symbol, okay, to be picky, I guess. Just like, you know, that's a symbol, this is a symbol. That's what it means. It means X is an element of the real numbers. You can just say the domain is all real numbers. That's fine with me. What about the range, though? What did we say? Are there is there certain numbers you can't have for y? What are what y values do you see here? Yeah, from here and up. Now, should that be a solid circle or a hollow circle? That should be a hollow circle, right? Because it does not include that value. So when you write it, then it should be y is greater than zero, not equal to. The y-intercept is 1, or if you want, it's 0, 1. It passes through that point, 0, 1. Okay, now, what do you think is going to happen as we change the value of the, the base here? So we're going to do something tricky here. Not very tricky, actually. We're going to do this. Let's make this 1 up to... 10. How wide do we have to make that then? <coughs> 90 pixels wide, I think. Okay, so that's going to be my base there. So now I'm graphing, now I'm going to graph y equals a to the power of x. When it's 1, you notice it's just this horizontal line, right? Let's change this to a uh, different color here, just to make your life slightly more exciting. Any choice of color anybody care? Green. Purple. <laughs> Is that okay? Yeah. You want it to be thicker so you can see it? So you can actually see that it's purple? Or is this okay? This is okay. You want this thicker? Okay. This is making for some good video, I have to tell you. Line thickness. How about that? Is that... We don't want to go too crazy here. Okay, now... As I, so this is 2, right? Here's 2. So it matches that other one. As I make the base bigger and bigger, does it make sense what's happening to that graph? Remember that it, it's, it's sort of making it steeper, right? Remember that these graphs are taking that base and doing it to the power of something. Let's make it 3 so we can work with numbers. Maybe that makes some sense to us here. Can almost oh yeah I am eh 
Think about what points are on there. 